Welcome to Chuck Builds. On this video, you are about to watch method one of installing Home Assistant onto a PC, but I want you to know that this is coming from a longer, more complete version that is also on my channel that covers both methods and has a lot of background information about the what and the whys. The video you're about to watch has been cut to be as short as possible and waste no time getting through the steps. However, if you have any issues or you'd like to know why I chose some of the things that I did, please go check out that longer version. It's gonna be a little bit of some rough cuts, but I'm trying to make it as quick as possible. So let's dive in. And there's gonna be two ways that we can do this. The reason I choose this first method is because all you need is a USB drive. If you need to use DVDs, you can. I think everybody's got a USB and that's all we're gonna need. Now, everything in this video I'll be covering is pretty much written up word for word in the Home Assistant Guide. And I'll also have a quick write up with my screenshots and, and stuff that I used on my website if you wanna follow along. Regardless of what method you're gonna to use to install Home Assistant, you're gonna to have to make some BIOS changes. So I'm gonna turn on this computer. I'll be pressing F2 as it turns on, as that's the key I need to press for my Dell to get into the BIOS. If you don't know what key to press, you could also try escape F1, F2, or the delete key as it's turning on, kind of spam those as it's turning on and you might get into BIOS that way or you can Google and see what key it is for you. Home Assistant only requires two changes here, but I'm gonna recommend a few others as well. Those two changes are gonna be UEFI boot mode and secure boot. We wanna make sure secure boot is off. We wanna ensure the UEFI boot mode is on. The best way to do it is just to work through all of your settings, take a quick glance, read them all, and this is a great chance to make sure that your system has everything you're expecting. We're making sure that our UEFI boot mode is enabled. We're making sure that our secure boot is disabled. We'll double check that we have multiple cores enabled. We'll have all the Intel features such as speed step and turbo boost enabled. We'll have chosen our AC recovery or power recovery option and we'll have gone through and blocked the sleep as well. So now we've done all that, we'll come through and we'll click apply to save it, and then we'll come to exit, and that's just gonna restart the computer. Before we actually do method one, let's talk about what's gonna happen. First, we're gonna install a software called Belina Etcher, and then an operating system called Ubuntu. We will use Belina Etcher to write Ubuntu onto our USB drive, and then we'll plug in that USB drive to our host computer and boot into the Ubuntu operating system. Once in there, we will download the Home Assistant operating system image and write that to the host PC using Ubuntu. We will then remove the USB drive and restart. Any flash drive will do. I do not recommend using any very large flash drive. See whatever you have laying around and we'll go ahead and insert this into the computer. First step we're gonna do is downloading the Ubuntu operating system. And to do so, we'll go to ubuntu.com slash download. I'll have a link in the description and we'll click download Ubuntu desktop and we'll just click download right here. However, the file that we are downloading from Ubuntu is not an application file. It's not an exe. We can't just click it and run it. It's an image file, and we need to write it onto the flash drive. Now, Home Assistant officially recommends Belina Etcher. Belina Etcher is good and it works well, but really only in Windows and I think on Mac. It's recently almost entirely stopped working on Linux. And this is a huge reason why my old video is no longer good because Belina Etcher just didn't work for so many people. I'm gonna stick to Belina Etcher just because it's what's in the Home Assistant documents. There are alternatives. You can use the Raspberry Pi installer if you must. I'm just doing this because it's on their guide but we're gonna click download on Etcher. And once it's installed, we're gonna be choosing flash from file. Navigate to your downloads folder and grab that Ubuntu image that we just downloaded. We're gonna select our target. Be certain here that you're choosing the correct drive. You can absolutely overwrite an existing drive and it will delete everything there and you will not be able to get it back. For me, I have this 32 gig USB drive plugged in and I'm certain that this is the one I want. And so I'll select this and we'll click flash. Belina Etcher has finished writing our ISO file to the flash drive, but I wanna call out one thing before we move on. After this whole process is finished, your flash drive might not look like it works inside of Windows, or I have a separate video on my channel under the shorts section of how to fix a broken USB drive. So at this time, I'll eject my USB flash drive. So I've plugged in the USB to my computer and I'm turning it on and I'm pressing F2 again to go back to the BIOS. We're gonna come down to boot sequence. We're gonna make sure that this USB, USB is above whatever is there. This is your boot order from top to bottom. It'll boot into the USB first. If nothing gets selected, it'll then cycle down to the hard drive. So we'll click apply, save it. 
and then we'll close and it should restart. And then we're gonna do try Ubuntu. So we'll just press enter on this top option. So we'll come over here and click try Ubuntu in English. So now we've booted into the Ubuntu operating system running from the flash drive, I need to connect to the internet. We need to connect to the internet in order to download the Home Assistant image file. Now that we're connected to the internet, we'll go to our web browser and we're going to go to Home Assistant. Dot io and we'll go to the getting started page installations and then installing on x86 64 machines there's a tutorial and if we scroll down we'll get a link to the latest home assistant image and that's right here in step number five and we're just going to let this download we can just click on the image we downloaded choose a destination i'll be choosing the ssd inside of my host Again, be careful, whatever you choose will get formatted. It will delete everything on there and you will not be able to recover it. So double check and then choose start restoring. And then a last warning, everything will be deleted, be sure, and then click restore. So now that this is completed and it has written that disk image onto the SSD inside of my host machine, um, at this time we can just turn off the PC or restart. So it prompted us to remove the USB and then press enter and it's going to restart and we're not going to plug this back in. We're gonna keep it out. We're done with Ubuntu. We're gonna let this boot into Home Assistant which is now installed on the SSD. Um, so we're done. We can let this run and we're gonna wait for the big Home Assistant page and we're gonna check for an IP address. Now that Home Assistant has connected, we have an IP address seen in our interface for WLP2S0. And if you type that IP address followed by colon 8123 into your internet browser's address bar, you will be taken to your Home Assistant page. And this is how you actually interface with Home Assistant itself. You can get the app on your phone and you can do it through a web browser. Pretty fast, huh? We did skip over a couple of things and I didn't cover some additional steps that you might wanna take like setting up Wi-Fi or getting a static IP set up. However, I have a ton of resources on my website and if you go to my channel, I have a whole Home Assistant playlist. If you don't know what to do next, I will cover that in the first boot into Home Assistant video here on my playlist. If you have any questions or something didn't work, please leave a comment, but I also encourage you to check out the longer version of this video or my older version of this video in order to make sure that there's nothing that you skipped over that might be causing that issue. I tried really hard to get this out on top of my longer video because I know some folks just need to see it done quickly without any of the fluff, and I hope that this covers that for you. If not, please let me know what I missed out, and I'll be sure to get it corrected. Thank you.